First Kings chapter 12. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard of it, for he was still in Egypt, where he had fled from King Solomon, then Jeroboam returned from Egypt, and they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and said to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now, therefore, lighten the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke that he placed on us, and we will serve you. He said to them, Go away for three days, then come again to me. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam took counsel with the older men who had attended his father Solomon while he was still alive, saying, How do you advise me to answer this people? They answered him, If you will be a servant to this people today and serve them and speak good words to them when you answer them, then they will be your servants forever. But he disregarded the advice that the older men gave him and consulted with the young men who had grown up with him and now attended him. He said to them, What do you advise that we answer this people who have said to me, Lighten the yoke that your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him said to him, Thus you should say to this people who spoke to you, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you must lighten it for us. Thus you should say to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's loins. Now, whereas my father laid on you a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had said. Come to me again the third day. The king answered the people harshly. He disregarded the advice that the older men had given him and spoke to them according to the advice of the young men. My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, because it was a turn of affairs brought about by the Lord that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord had spoken by Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam son of Nebat. When all Israel saw that the king would not listen to them, the people answered the king, What share do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, look now to your own house, O David. So Israel went away to their tents, but Rehoboam reigned over the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah. When King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was taskmaster over the forced labor, all Israel stoned him to death. King Rehoboam then hurriedly mounted his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. When all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the assembly and made him king over all Israel. There was no one who followed the house of David except the tribe of Judah alone. When Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. 180,000 chosen troops to fight against the house of Israel to restore the kingdom to Rehoboam, son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shemaiah, the man of God, say to King Rehoboam of Judah, son of Solomon, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin and to the rest of the people, thus says the Lord, you shall not go up or fight against your kindred, the people of Israel. Let everyone go home, for this thing is from me. So they heeded the word of the Lord and went home again, according to the word of the Lord. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and resided there. He went out from there and built Penuel. Then Jeroboam said to himself, Now the kingdom may well revert to the house of David. If this people continues to go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, 
the heart of this people will turn again to their master, King Rehoboam of Judah. They will kill me and return to King Rehoboam of Judah. So the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. He said to the people, You have gone up to Jerusalem long enough. Here are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. He set one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one at Bethel and before the other as far as Dan. He also made houses on high places and appointed priests from among all the people who were not Levites. Jeroboam appointed a festival on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, like the festival that was in Judah, and he offered sacrifices on the altar. So he did in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places that he had made. He went up to the altar that he had made in Bethel on the fifteenth day in the eighth month, in the month that he alone had devised. He appointed a festival for the people of Israel, and he went up to the altar to offer incense. 1 Kings chapter 13 While Jeroboam was standing by the altar to offer incense, a man of God came out of Judah by the word of the Lord to Bethel and proclaimed against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name, and he shall sacrifice on you the priests of the high places who offer incense on you and human bones shall be burned on you. He gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign that the Lord has spoken. The altar shall be torn down, and the ashes that are on it shall be poured out. When the king heard what the man of God cried out against the altar at Bethel, Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Seize him! But the hand that he stretched out against him withered, so that he could not draw it back to himself. The altar also was torn down, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign that the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. The king said to the man of God, Entreat now the favor of the Lord your God, and pray for me, so that my hand may be restored to me. So the man of God entreated to the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, and became as it was before. Then the king said to the man of God, Come home with me and dine, and I will give you a gift. But the man of God said to the king, If you give me half your kingdom, I will not go in with you, nor will I eat food or drink water in this place. For thus I was commanded by the word of the Lord, You shall not eat food or drink water, or return by the way that you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way that he had come to Bethel. Now there lived an old prophet in Bethel. One of his sons came and told him all that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words also that he had spoken to the king, they told to their father. Their father said to them, Which way did he go? And his sons showed him the way that the man of God who came from Judah had gone. Then he said to his sons, Saddle a donkey for me. So they saddled a donkey for him, and he mounted it. He went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak tree. He said to him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? He answered, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat some food. But he said, I cannot return with you or go in with you, nor will I eat food or drink water with you in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, You shall not eat food or drink water there, or return by the way that you came. Then the other said to him, I also am a prophet as you are, and an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord. Bring him back with you into your house so that he may eat food and drink water. But he was deceiving him. Then the man of God went back with him and ate food and drank water in his house. As they were sitting at the table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. 
and he proclaimed to the man of God who came from Judah. Thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment that the Lord your God commanded you, but have come back and have eaten food and drunk water in the place of which he said to you, eat no food and drink no water, your body shall not come to your ancestral tomb. After the man of God had eaten food and had drunk, they saddled for him a donkey belonging to the prophet who had brought him back. Then, as he went away, a lion met him on the road and killed him. His body was thrown in the road, and the donkey stood beside it. The lion also stood beside the body. People passed by and saw the body thrown in the road, with the lion standing by the body. And they came and told it in the town where the old prophet lived. When the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard of it, he said, It is the man of God who disobeyed the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord has given him to the lion, which has torn him and killed him, according to the word that the Lord spoke to him. Then he said to his sons, Saddle a donkey for me. So they saddled one, and he went and found the body thrown in the road, with the donkey and the lion standing beside the body. The lion had not eaten the body or attacked the donkey. The prophet took up the body of the man of God, laid it on the donkey, and brought it back to the city to mourn and to bury him. He laid the body in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother! After he had buried him, he said to his sons, When I die, bury me in the grave in which the man of God is buried laid my bones beside his bones. For the saying that he proclaimed by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the houses of the high places that are in the cities of Samaria shall surely come to pass. Even after this event, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way, but made priests for the high places again from among all the people. Any who wanted to be priests, he consecrated for the high places. This matter became sin to the house of Jeroboam, so as to cut it off and to destroy it from the face of the earth. At that time, Abijah, son of Jeroboam, fell sick. Jeroboam said to his wife, Go, disguise yourself so that it will not be known that you are the wife of Jeroboam, and go to Shiloh. For the prophet Ahijah is there, who said of me that I should be king over this people. Take with you ten loaves, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what shall happen to the child. Jeroboam's wife did so. She set out and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. Now Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were dim because of his age. But the Lord said to Ahijah, The wife of Jeroboam was coming to inquire of you concerning her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus you shall say to her. When she came, she pretended to be another woman. But when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, as she came in at the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another? For I am charged with heavy tidings for you. Go, tell Jeroboam. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Because I exalted you from among the people, made you leader over my people Israel, and tore the kingdom away from the house of David to give it to you, yet you have not been like my servant David, who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart, doing only that which was right in my sight, but you have done evil above all those who were before you, and have gone and made for yourself other gods." and cast images, provoking me to anger, and have thrust me behind your back. Therefore, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam. I will cut off from Jeroboam every male, both bond and free, in Israel, and will consume the house of Jeroboam, just as one burns up dung until it is all gone. Anyone belonging to Jeroboam who dies in the city, the dogs shall eat. And anyone who dies in the open country, the birds of the air shall eat, for the Lord has spoken. Therefore set out, go to your house, 
When your feet enter the city, the child shall die. All Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he alone of Jeroboam's family shall come to the grave, because in him there is found something pleasing to the Lord, the God of Israel, in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam today, even right now. The Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water. He will root up Israel out of this good land that he gave to their ancestors and scatter them beyond the Euphrates because they have made their sacred poles, provoking the Lord to anger. He will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned and which he caused Israel to commit. Then Jeroboam's wife got up and went away, and she came to Tirzah. As she came to the threshold of the house, the child died. All Israel buried him and mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant, the prophet Ahijah. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred and how he reigned, are written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. The time that Jeroboam reigned was twenty-two years. Then he slept with his ancestors, and his son Nadab succeeded him. Now Rehoboam, son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city that the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, to put his name there. His mother's name was Nama, the Ammonite. Judah did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. They provoked him to jealousy with their sins that they committed, more than all that their ancestors had done. For they also built for themselves high places, pillars, and sacred poles on every high hill and under every green tree. There were also male temple prostitutes in the land. They committed all the abominations of the nations that the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, King Shishak of Egypt came up against Jerusalem. He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took everything. He also took away all the shields of gold that Solomon had made. So King Rehoboam made shields of bronze instead and committed them to the hands of the officers of the guard who kept the door of the king's house. As often as the king went into the house of the Lord, the guard carried them and brought them back to the guard room. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? There was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. Rehoboam slept with his ancestors and was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. His mother's name was Nama, the Ammonite. His son, Abijam, succeeded him. 